Now that I've attempted using loss of scaling on emulators, it's time to do one last thing, and that is pushing LSFG 3.0 to its absolute limits. Now currently the maximum multiplier is times 20, which is exactly how high I went. Now obviously you shouldn't play any game in 2025 at 30 FPS, but using LSFG you can mitigate the latency and visual issues caused by low FPS. Now with that, although LSFG can do magic, that doesn't mean you can push LSFG too hard. Doing that can cause a lot of issues, which you'll see later in this video. But without further ado, let's see how this goes. Now to start off, Cyberpunk chose to not work well with my PC today. The settings I normally use started barely giving me 60 FPS, but eventually I found decent settings for this video. All settings are at high, the ultra settings you're seeing here were changed later in the video, but the FPS still stayed locked at 30 FPS, so it won't make a difference. I also use FSR just to increase the FPS a tiny bit more. Now for the subject of this video, I wanted to start at 30 FPS instead of 60 just to give loss of scaling more performance to burn because LSFG actually uses a decent bit of performance to create these fake frames and as you'll see, the higher the multiplier, the lower the FPS. Now to start, I did the normal times too. This had very little visual artifacting and not much latency. There definitely was latency, but this amount of input latency is nothing compared to the higher multipliers. Other than latency, as you'll see, the performance sticks at 30 FPS, so LSFG isn't so intensive that we drop from 30 yet. Now we are at times 5 which is definitely a step up from 60 FPS. The game feels more responsive but does have a little more artifacting, specifically on the crosshair. You can see that LSFG has a horrible time processing it unlike the rest of the HUD which is completely fine. Other than that, the input latency still doesn't feel horrible but that is indeed subject to change in a few minutes. At times 10, things start going downhill. The game becomes far more unbearable, and at this point, the input latency starts getting pretty bad. And although I wouldn't want to play an action game like this with the LSFG 5x multiplier, I would for sure rather play like that than this. As you'll see, I attempt to drive, and it is definitely interesting. Although the visual artifacting isn't horrible, input latency makes driving feel like I don't know how to use a keyboard and mouse. Last and definitely least, I try the maximum multiplier which is times 20 which is meant to give 600 FPS at my locked 30 FPS and as you'll see, that wasn't even close to happening. I hovered around 400 to 500 FPS the entire time and that is because I could no longer hold 30 FPS. I was down towards 25 FPS which is even worse. Of course the input latency got worse but this time you can visually see the horrible artifacting. Surprisingly at times 10, it it wasn't insane, but now any fast moves makes this game look like it's in a blender. I feel this doesn't have to be said, but don't seriously attempt to use times 20 if you have a lower end system. You'll probably get less FPS than you locked at, and things will start visually and physically becoming unbearable. 